What's going on YouTube world? Austin Zay back here with another YouTube video. And in this video, um, we're gonna talk about some ATM stuff, okay? So definitely make sure you stay to the end of the video. Smash that like button if you haven't already. Smash that subscribe button if you have not already. And uh, I'm sitting in front of the bank right now waiting for my business partner, Austin. Lewis to come out of the bank, okay? And he's actually walking here right now. We are actually filling a couple of ATMs of ours. So, here's Austin Lewis, the man, the myth, the legend himself. I got this camera propped up here. Yeah, it's a pretty solid prop, too. You know what I mean? Honestly, yeah, that's not bad. You like that? In this video, we're gonna talk about a couple of the things um, that people ask us most frequently about the ATM business. Again, my partner is in the bank right now. Um, he actually had another bank right now because the last bank, we, we forgot to put in an order for cash, so we had to go to another location uh, of where we bank in order for him to actually get the cash that we need to fill the ATMs that we're filling today, okay? So that's what he's doing right now. I wanted to shoot this video of the top questions that we get asked in the ATM business, okay? Um, one of the biggest questions that we get asked is insurance. You know, what happens if somebody steals the machine? What happens if somebody breaks into the machine? Now, we don't really um, struggle with that a lot. You know, at the end of the day, we've actually never had um, a break-in or somebody actually tried to steal one of our machines. Knock on wood, okay? But at the end of the day, you know, it's not really that common, right? I don't know, you know, a lot of people I think watch too much TV, they watch too much Netflix, they watch too much news, right? Fox 10, CNBC, you know, whatever. And it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's constantly negative, right? There, People are only highlighting negative news, you know? It's just kind of, without getting too much into it, the media only covers essentially a lot of the negativity going on in the world. Um, and I like to live in an abundance mindset, right? So we live in an abundance mindset where and at the end of the day, if something's gonna happen, it's gonna happen regardless. Um, I'm not gonna try to prevent that with my entire life, right? Like I'm not, I'm not not gonna get into the business because of something potentially going wrong. Because then at the end of the day, you wouldn't get into any business, right? Like no business that you get involved in, like there's, there's always going to be the possibility of something bad happening, whether it's real estate, whether you're wholesaling real estate, whether you're a real estate agent, whether you're in the insurance industry, whatever industry that you're in, there's always a possibility that something doesn't go as planned, right? If something doesn't go right, that you know people steal from you, that business partners steal from you, right? That your employees steal from you. So just understanding that, that understanding that you know at the end of the day, um, bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people. That being said, in our contracts, the way that we have them written, um, the ATM machine is actually covered under the insurance of the owner of that location. So it essentially becomes a fixture of the location the moment that it gets bolted to the ground like an ice machine or a water machine or a Coca-Cola machine. So that's the way that we pretty much have ours set up. Um, again, you know, set it up how you want to set it up, right? I'm not here to give legal counsel or legal advice, obviously, consult with an attorney. But at the end of the day, um, everything's negotiable. You can write your contract however you want to write your contract. And there are different um, insurance providers that cover the ATM business that you can go out and actually search on Google or um, you know talk to a friend or talk to somebody that is in the business to figure out what insurance companies they use to cover their ATM machines. We just cover our machine through the owner of the location's insurance and then any cash inside obviously we're responsible for. But again, we're not focused on the negative, we're focused on the positive, we haven't had any problems yet. And if we ever do have a problem, we'll focus on that problem when that problem actually um, occurs or takes place. Not any sooner and definitely not any later. Question number two that people always ask is how you land a location, okay? How you land a location. Um, there's a ton of different ways to land a location. Way number one is to cold call, right? Pick up the phone and start cold calling different businesses in your area, asking them if they already have an ATM machine or if they don't have an ATM machine. If they don't have an ATM machine, would they be interested in getting one? If they already have an AT machine, are they happy with the person that is managing that machine? A lot of people that are managing the machines and a lot of the owners of the locations are unhappy because of the management in place, right? The person that is supposed to be loading that machine, um, they're late, they don't ever come, the machine goes down, it runs out of receipt paper, etc., etc., etc. 
in those types of situations, you can actually tell them that you're gonna provide better customer service and potentially even make more profit for them. Therefore, allowing you to land the location over the person that already has that location installed. Way number two is to send text messages, right? So, you know, text these same people the same way that you would cold call, you text them asking them if they want to land a location. Now, obviously there's ways to systematize that. You know, you can do text blasting. There's a bunch of different text softwares out there that you can actually um, mass text people, you know, a generic text message asking them if they want a machine in their location. All right, just pulled up to another one of our ATM locations that we are filling here. And uh, I wanna go ahead and talk about way number three to land a location, and that is to just go ahead and walk into the location. We literally have just walked into multiple different barbershops, multiple different nail salons, multiple different hair salons, multiple different locations where we would want an ATM and just simply ask them if they would want an ATM or if they'd be interested in um, you know, letting us put an ATM machine in their location. Now, again, if they already have a location, it's just a matter of talking about if they're happy with the person that is um, you know, kind of maintaincing that or kind of in charge of that or if they're unhappy. A lot of times if they're unhappy, they'll go ahead and remove that machine and allow you to put your machine into that location. Question number three that people are always asking about the ATM business is the different types of machines. Now, I'm not gonna get too much into you know, Hisong or Gen Mega or the actual brand of the machine, rather uh, the machine itself. So typically on average, you have about three or four different types of machines. Now, machine number one being just a standalone ATM machine. Okay, very basic, very simple uh, machine, okay? And I'll go ahead and pop a picture of that up right here. Um, type number two is going to be a hanging machine. Now, this is a machine that essentially just hangs on the wall. These are typically used in places that are a bit more like you wouldn't want a standalone machine. You know, maybe a bit more compact of a location, people would be running into it, stuff like that. Um, you know, or just a location where, you know, a hanging machine makes a lot more sense. So I'll show you that here as well. You know, we have a couple of hanging machines in different clubs. Um, clubs, I would say, are very big for hanging machines, okay? Um, every now and then I'll see a hanging machine at a restaurant or things of that nature. Uh, machine type number three is going to be a machine that kind of looks like it's hanging, but it actually goes into the wall. And a lot of these machines, you actually fill the machine from the back. A lot of times you'll see them at a bank, you'll see them at a credit union, you'll see them like um, at an outdoor bank, like the ATM machine that you literally walk up to at Wells Fargo, at Chase, at Bank of America. A lot of your bigger banks have that, where it looks like it's hanging on the wall, but it actually goes into the wall. These machines are typically a bit more expensive, and really there's not a ton of different times where you'd be using a machine like that. Machine number four is probably gonna be just like an ATM trailer, okay? You've obviously seen our ATM trailer, and this is going to be like a mobile ATM machine. A machine that you can actually pull behind your car, you can uh, you know, bring it to an event, you can bring it to a fair, you can bring it to um, you know, a motocross event, you can bring it to you know, pr pretty much any type of um, you know, event that goes on. You know, I know a lot of people bring them to like medical marijuana events, you know, people are always doing um, events like that, and there's really just a ton of different types of events that you could bring an ATM trailer to. Now, with events you could also bring a standalone machine and just chain it to a tree or have a standalone machine next to your ATM trailer so you have two ATMs um, if there's gonna be a large quantity of people trying to use the ATM at once and just chain that standalone machine to your ATM trailer when you park your trailer. Question number four that I always get asked is what ATMs do I personally like and I personally like the top two ATMs really if you ask anybody they'd probably say the same thing uh, maybe not but that is Gen Mega and Hisong and I'm probably pronouncing a second one wrong, um, but that is H-Y-U-S-O-N-G, uh, Hisong. And so Hisong and Jimmegas are, are my favorite two types of ATMs. They're pretty basic. They're the most basic ATMs that you can buy. Um, I do like the newer models. I believe it is the um, Gen Mega 2500 and the Hisong Halo 2. Those are my two favorite types of ATMs um, that we personally use the majority of the time in our business. Question number five that we always get asked, and if you're new to uh, learning about the ATM business, this one might be very helpful for you, but it is it like, where do you track all of the, the money and everything like that? Um, depending on what processor you go with or what merchant you go with, you're gonna have a back office to be able to track everything. You're gonna be able to track your reports, you're gonna be able to track how much cash is in a machine, you're gonna be able to track if there's an error, um, if there's a dispense error, if there's a bill jam, or whatever type of error that there is with the machine. You're gonna be able to track you know, um, the different surcharges that you make, and there's a bunch of different things that you're gonna be able to track on the back end. So like any other business, it is a very trackable business. You can keep track of it, although um, obviously it is a cash business. Um, you know, a lot of people think like, oh, there's so many bills and like, how do you not like lose money and like lose track of different things? And that is because it is all tracked. 
Obviously, we have our own tracking tools that we use as well, such as Google Spreadsheets and other various things that are very easy for us to be able to track our business. So that is what we personally do. Um, you know, you can obviously do whatever it is that you'd like to do. And you know, um, for tax purposes, like again, I I'm not an accountant. I'm not a a financial advisor or a tax, uh, you know, consultant or anything like that. But at the end of the day, um, you know, you're just paying taxes on the profit that you make, right? On the actual surcharge that you make um, over the course of that month or that year. So just remember, you're not you're not paying taxes on the initial money, right? Because you're not spending that money. Even if you're the one filling the ATM machine, you're not actually spending that money. It is just essentially sitting in the bottom of the ATM machine and then going back into your account when somebody pulls out that cash or makes a withdrawal. But it's only the surcharge that you're getting taxed on because that is the only profit that you're actually making. Hopefully, this video helped you. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Again, we do a lot of different things here on this channel, all the way from the ATM business to the real estate business, wholesaling, traditional real estate, and uh, different ways to make passive income, right? Different mindset um, things that we talk about here. You know, the books that we read and the mindset tips and tricks that have allowed us to get to where we're at at such a young age. Obviously, I'm very blessed to have the position that I have to be able to talk to you in videos like this. So definitely drop in the comment section down below what you would like to see in a future video, and I would be happy to make it. We'll see you soon.